Hey, what's going on everybody? It has been a while since I just did a down and dirty pier fishing video. We just had a big storm roll through. Hurricane Ian, Tropical Storm Ian, hit the west coast of Florida, came over and we felt a lot of pressures over here on the east coast. So, that means that a very specific type of fishing is about to happen out here on the pier. Let's get into the video. The minute we got out on the pier this morning, I saw a buddy of mine walking off the pier with a stud bun, like a 22, 23 inch fish, just a gorgeous snapper that people pay a lot of money to go catch on boats. And he literally caught it off of the pier here. So Victor and I rigged up our bottom rods with some dead bait in the hopes of hooking one of these muttons. All right, so right here we got a dead sardine, some 50 pound liter, little six ounce bank, and a pier full of people. I'm gonna cast this bad boy out. Oh, try not to get tangled. On, yeah. that, was, that was a far cast. Why? Must have watched my video on how to cast. What you got, man? Second mutton. The second one? I haven't got a bite yet. Just you want? Let me. Want me to net this one? Uh, no. That looks keeper. It does look keeper. Flip or die. Right. Send it. Let's go. Yeah, I like that looks good, dude. Yeah. I'm telling you, I think they're everywhere. You don't have to fish the teeth. Yeah, I'm about to go with you. I'm gonna come back down here. That might be. That a good looks good to me. Oh, sorry, bro. I gotta uh, take. Yeah, you can just put them on the cooler too. I mean, he ripped drag. Chill, buddy. That is. He's keeper, dude. Twenty inches, dude. Heck yeah. Yeah. 20 inch mutton. It's right there at the uh, Okay. Yeah, we got some too. Yo, I might have your rod. Yeah, I think I got it. There's a fish on here too. Yeah. Come on. Stay off that. Fish is on the piling. Got the rod right there. Oh, I got the fish. Thank you, Rick. Look at that, we just snagged the rod that went in and caught the mutton by hand. Deadline? Yeah, well it was on his rod. Probably a short mutton, but uh, we just hand -locked that kind of by accident. <laughs> so when you have a tropical storm, you get these giant swells and you get these giant changes in pressure out here. That causes a bunch of snapper from offshore that you normally would never catch from land to be pushed in shallow. So when I saw this storm coming in, I knew there was gonna be a possibility of catching a bunch of muttons and maybe some mangrove snapper from the pier, which is not a normal thing out here. Pick him up, pick him up. Are the clicker's off. You on there? Oh yeah, he's on there. Come on, about time you catch one. Yeah, I know, about time I do something with my life. Definitely a small fish. Oh, they like to charge the pier though. They definitely like to charge the pier. Eww! What did that mine do to you? Nothing. That's our... Oh. Oh, calm down, dude. It's gonna be okay. I promise. I promise. Come here. Woo. Gorgeous little mutton snapper. First one caught the proper way this morning on a hand line, but way too short. These things need to be 18 inches to keep. This one's probably, I don't know, probably like 
14 and a half inches. So we're gonna let him go, let him grow. See you, dude. Pretty much as soon as we started throwing baits, we started getting bites and there was a ton of short muttons. So muttons need to be 18 inches in order to keep. And I think in total we saw I don't know, over a hundred in like an hour caught on the pier. They're eating everything. They're eating lures, they're eating bait. Really, these fish are everywhere. There's, there's just only really a handful of keepers out here. Ryan, thanks for the video, man. Yeah, no worries. Have we uh, met before? No. I'm Ryan. I'm Wayne. Pleasure. You I'm said down, Wayne? I'm from Fort Lauderdale, Ray. Ray, nice to meet you. Pleasure. Okay, let's try this again. I'm gonna do a little 3 0 circle hook through the nose of this sardine. Drop my leader down to 40. Seen a lot more people get hit. I also went to a longer leader probably almost a pain to cast this long but i'm gonna give it a shot anyways whoa hook set dude yeah. i was calling you down here that guy just caught a pump oh yeah yeah don't you have your goofy jig yeah. side on which side on this side that, the right side the side we're on no the other side okay dude you caught four yeah. the only one i caught was a hand line Mutton number four Oh boy, I got someone's line. Yeah, dude. Welcome to fear fishing. <laughs> you haven't had enough tangles today. You needed to catch up your tangle numbers. You know what? It's not that bad though. <laughs> I'll come in and make you like really sorry. It's not bad. Hmm. There we go. Oh. Well, runner action. Yeah. Dude, when was the last time you fished a gotcha? I, it's gotta be 10 years. Uh, you need pliers now, good job. <laughs> Gotchas are, have the sharpest hooks of all time. Yep. They always manage to find their way into things that they're not supposed to. Yep. Exactly. Fresh mud snapper bait right there. Mm, there we go, on the goofy jig. Bam, look at that. Phew. Told you they'd eat it. Oh, broke me off too. Bam. Ah. Fun size little mutton snapper. Ate the quill of the goofy jig. Let this guy go. I'm getting a nip. There we go. It's a fish. That's a good fish. Yeah, we're tangled down. Ooh, that's a good fish. It's a good fish. Nah. Yeah. He might be. Uh, I think he's short. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe Ryan. That's right on the edge. Maybe we'll go measure him. Look at him. Are you the Juno Ryan? Uh, back in, from back in the day, in a past life. Zero. And he is 18. 18. Nice. That is an 18 incher. Good job, my dude. There we go. Someone take my. Oh no, it is. 18 inch mutton snapper on the pier. Beautiful fish, man. Really stoked. Really cool time of year to be able to catch these and it only happens every once in a while. So yeah, awesome to be able to do. Cliff charter. Cliff charters, got them. Stoked, we're gonna throw this guy on some ice. I do want to show some love to the apparel sponsor for this channel, Navalis Apparel. That is the bamboo hoodie that I'm wearing. They also make super comfortable bamboo line shorts. So if you guys are in the market for some new apparel, go ahead and check them out. Code Ryan Moore is going to save you guys 15%. Yeah. I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought I caught a Spanish mackerel. Pretty sure this guy is a baby king. It's a baby, it's a baby king, dude. Let him go. So if you guys saw my last mullet run video, you saw a lot of snook, a lot of tarpon, a lot of sharks, and a lot of clean water. 
As we get later into fall, the water is going to dirty up a little bit and the type of fish that you're going to be catching changes. We are still seeing a lot of mullet out here, but you're going to start to see things like bluefish, Spanish mackerel, Jack Gravel, ladyfish, and not the typical snook and tarpon that you were seeing earlier in the year. Okay, so right here we got what's called a goofy jig. You got the main jig and then you got the little quill tied with a loop knot. This is meant to catch pompano primarily, but honestly it catches everything. I think I filmed a video last year where we were pompano fishing and we caught nine or ten different species on these and didn't catch one pompano. <laughs> that just tells you. It basically sinks down to the bottom, you jig it up, and then it flutters like this. So it kind of looks like a sand flea or a shrimp that's fleeing off the bottom and then fluttering back down. So works very, very well for a lot of different applications. Super popular on the pier. You pretty much want to fish it. You want to cast up current. So uh, since I'm standing next to my down rod right now, I'm actually casting it underneath the pier. There's been a good amount of fish hanging under the pier. So I'm casting it up current, letting it drift out with me and letting it sink down all the way to the bottom, all the way down. Once we feel it hit the bottom, we bounce it off the bottom, let it sink again, give a couple bounces. Oh, and just like that, we're hooked up. What do we got? We got us a little baby mutton. Tiny little mutton snapper. Oh, Great talent. Ow. Great talent. spiky little guy. We're actually just gonna release you like this. Bam. See you, dude. Come on. Later. Oh! Good chicken? Big chicken. Make me proud, Cliff. I'll make you proud, Dad. <laughs> the dad I never had. Hey, good job, man. Oh, I think yours was bigger. Slow down, for sure. Definitely, I think that there's like... Let's say there's a biomass of muttons that moves in after the storm, right? That's why everyone's here. Those keepers are going to get caught first, and as those keepers get caught, there's probably going to be more fish flourishing through the pier, but you're going to have to work harder and harder and harder, and now it's pretty much all shorts. It seems like there's a lot less being caught, but this is so much fun as a land-based angler because, I mean, you could go offshore and spend a whole day and not get a keeper mutton, but for the entire pier, there's probably been at least 20 keepers caught. It's, mm -hmm. it's literally a once... I wouldn't say once in a lifetime, no, but something that only year. happens once a year. Exactly. So it's a really special thing. And the last couple of years, we haven't got good storms, so really it hasn't happened in yep. the last couple of years. Whoa! Oh. Nah, I think this is the little mutton. Could it be? The moment. And I think it looks like another little king. Dude, that's the third little king we've got. You're catching everything on the gotcha today, huh? No, it is. 100%. Permit? Yep. Wow. Look at that. Nice. On a gotcha? Look at that thing. Oh, the gotcha came out right there, too. That's a lucky catch. Yo, look at you, man. No worries. It's you the fun thing you? about gotchas. They catch everything. It's a baby See you, dude. Get us one of these mullet. We are going to try something a little bit unorthodox. We got this mullet. It's something that is unorthodox for me, I should say. We're going to take this mullet and put him out on a trolley rig. Vic, what are you thinking? Took this guy. Both in the back. In the top of the back, right? Yeah. Both of them. Ooh. Both of them, boy. Special 
especially with that school coming through, man. That looks good. So we got two treble hooks. I'm actually gonna rehook this one. Got two treble hooks in this guy, some wire leader, and he is on this sliding rig. Take him, we're gonna slide him down our line. And it's gonna make him sit here on top in an area where hopefully a big kingfish, king mackerel will come up and eat him. Want me to do my kingfish dance? Dude, I need you to. They're getting kingfished out there. There's a big school of mullet out there, y'all, getting blown up by something. So, I don't know how well you guys can see this, but we have the biggest school of mullet I've seen all year coming towards the pier some of them are getting blown up right now. There is a ridiculous amount of them. I still got my mullet out here. We'll see if we can get a bite once they come through. Cause you got to think there's a bunch of stuff falling. This giant mass of bait. That is some mullet boy. Y'all, I grew up fishing out on this pier, and anytime we had storms that caused muttons to come in, I was honestly always in school. So I could never actually get out here and fish for these things. So I was telling Vic today, it's like, I grew up fishing on this place and I never have caught a keeper mutton on this pier until today. So crazy, barely legal, 18 inch fish, but um, super awesome, delicious fish. Definitely gonna be cooking them up. You know, feel lucky to get out here and do this because I mean, it just doesn't happen often. Maybe once a year if you get a storm. So we haven't had a good storm in a couple years. So honestly, once every couple years, you're gonna get a chance to catch a fish like this off of this pier. And there were bigger ones caught. There were fish up to 25, 26 inches, which people would pay tons of money to get out here, or people would pay tons of money on a charter to catch a fish of that class. So it's awesome. I'm you know super stoked, feel super lucky. Vic and I are gonna go grab some lunch and then we're gonna look for a new spot to fish this afternoon. And if that doesn't pan out, we'll come back out here. Okay, here at the inlet, we got a bunch of little finger malt and stuff getting chased. So I am going to throw out Victor's Gotcha, see if I can catch Jack Cravel, mackerel, whatever it is, chasing all these little finger mullet. Just jerk it back and forth, see if we can get a bite. Come on. Oh, Vic, I got your bait. Get in here. Nice, I got a nice Spanish mackerel. Yeah, you go in there, buddy. Oh! Chewing. Chewing, chewing. Man, oh man. Come on up here, buddy. Chill, 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 chill. Got my Danko's attached to this bucket here. Bam, and I always, especially when I'm dealing with treble hooks on something like a gotcha and green fish like this, it is a recipe for you to get a hook in your hand or your foot if you're not careful. So I've unhooked these guys by hand many times with traps, but these days I definitely always try and carry a pair of pliers. I always, carry a pair, I always carry a pair of pliers these days, like these Dankos. You guys can use my code RyanMori10 to save 10% off at checkout. They're a huge sponsor of the channel. So if you do need some pliers, go grab yourself a pair. Love these guys. And I love catching little Jack Cravels. See you later, dude.
did it. Oh. He just caught you a, oh, well, he's definitely a keeper now. Nice 18 inch. Properly Dude, do it. Ricky's one of the OGs of the peer, vid peer videos. Good job, dude. Proud of you. Oh, double header on the spinners. Oh my gosh. Dude, you got a keeper bluefish. Felix, get a net! Oh, yeah, it's keeper. That's all Is that a mangrove? Damn, that's a big mangrove. It's a big mangrove, dude. Hey, well, yeah, the size of that up. mangrove, dude. That's a stud. Wow. Oh my god. Wow. Wow. Nick Charters. That's a Fort Pierce button. Oh my god. Oh my god. He said he's going in the corner. Yeah, he went right for the corner. He said the corner looked hot. It's definitely yeah. clip charter, boy. Uh. Oh, he might be too. And this is a bluefish. Might get out of my spot. <laughs> I send you invoice later. Uh oh. That's a keeper, boy. Mutton boy. Mm. Oh, oh, we got a mutton boy. <laughs> Woo! Watch out, Eli. There you go. Oh! oh! <laughs> Second hook! <laughs> Doing? Oh, go, 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 Well, right species. It was the wrong size. Well undersized. Oh, sorry, bud. Didn't mean to do that to you. See you later, dude. So came back out here with the hopes of at least catching like one more keeper mutton. There was a couple good ones caught and a couple big mangrove snapper, but really didn't land up any big ones. I just landed like one or two shorts and a couple junk fish. But now we're gonna go home, fillet up that mangrove, so I'll see you guys at the fillet table. Got our keeper mutton snapper here and let's fillet him up. So I got my Danko Pro Series fillet knife. And again, you guys can save 10% with my code RyanMori10 on all Danko products gonna make our first cut here now muttons like other snappers have big big old scales which you know initially cutting through they're a little bit thicker but when you're scaling the fish or when you're skinning the fish I should say it's a lot easier to get the skin off you know some people get mad online um, when they don't see us bleed fish and you know I think bleeding fish sometimes can make a difference with certain species in the, t in the final product of the meat. And a lot of the times the reason we don't bleed fish is because we're just on a bite and we just are excited to keep fishing. But to tell you guys what, a lot of the times I never really notice a difference at all in the quality of the meat in a bled fish versus an unbled fish. So now I'm going to work my way up, get up over these, break, break through these pin bones. So I'm up over that rib cage, work my way down this rib cage now. Bam, all the way down. Nice mutton snapper fillet. Not the biggest mutton in the world, but a legal one, an 18 incher. And I, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I think that looks pretty good. Just gonna skin this guy now. The fillet kind of close to my makeshift fillet table here. I got two coolers stacked up on one of you, one another. Not, don't have as nice a setup as Victor and Brooke do. If you guys have seen their catch and cook videos, they get a nice. Little little place on the water to fillet their fish all the time. I'm just gonna work my way down with this mutton snapper fillet. Got the skin off. Left just a fine little layer of meat, so I get rid of the a lot of that like bloodline and that film that sticks to the meat. And now I'm just gonna feel for the pin bones here. Cut the pin bones out. Bam, just like this like this and then we have a beautiful mutton snapper filet and I will see you guys in the kitchen. Welcome to the kitchen. I feel like I haven't done a catch and cook in quite some time now. 
I actually riding solo tonight. Girlfriend's working, roommates are both out of the house. Just you guys and me, I'm gonna be cooking up that mutton snapper. So with our salsa, we're looking at a base of pineapple, obviously, and then we're adding some cherry tomatoes, a little bit of jalapeno, and then some cilantro. And that's pretty much it. A pretty basic list of ingredients, but it turns into something absolutely delicious. Last ingredient's gonna be the cilantro, just a, a fine bit of this. I don't always get to enjoy this when I cook because a lot of people don't like it. For some people, I guess it tastes soapy. I don't really even taste it all that much to tell you guys the truth. I just think it adds a very, very subtle bit of flavor to a salsa like this. Though it does get everywhere when I'm chopping it up. I feel like it's all over the sink after the fact. You know, I thought I was forgetting something and I absolutely was. I was gonna add a little bit of red onion to this guy. So I'm gonna dice up just a hair, maybe like a quarter of a red onion and add that to our salsa. And we'll just mix all those ingredients together. A lot of colors going on, really popping. And our pineapple, tomato, cilantro, red onion, and a touch of jalapeno, because I like it just a little bit spicy. We're gonna toss this guy in the fridge while we cook up our fish. Since it's just me, I'm just doing one of the fillets. I'll leave, another, I'll leave the other fillet for dinner tomorrow night or the next night. Pat this guy down dry with a paper towel. Now, big mistake a lot of people make with saltwater fish is they rinse off their fish and, uh, loses a lot of flavor that way. Like, it, uh, imagine rinsing off a steak or something like that before you went to eat it. Just be so hilarious. That's why just taking care of your fish, cleaning them in the right way that you're not getting any of the stomach contents on the meat, and then patting them dry with a paper towel, making sure there's no scales on it. That's really all you need to do, and you're gonna get a much better end product once you're done cooking up this fish. So, our beautiful little mutton snapper filet, and here is how we're gonna season it. Start off very simple, some black pepper. I'm gonna do a little bit of salt. And the minute that we put this salt on here, it's gonna start pulling a little bit more liquid out of this fish. So that's another reason why you pat it dry. Some garlic powder. Some chili powder. A little hefty there. And lastly, some smoked paprika. And I'm just gonna season this one side of the fish because the way that we're gonna cook it, it's pretty much gonna cook 90% on one side. We'll do season side down and then we'll flip it for like the last 10% of the fish. But delicious, I've done this a bunch of times. I really like this preparation. Just waiting for our pan to heat up over here. We're gonna go season side down. And this guy shouldn't take very long at all. Not the biggest filet in the world. Thinner filet should cook fairly quickly. Heat is on medium high. I don't know if I mentioned that. Ooh, that is that golden brown that we wanted. Beautiful. Turn the heat off. She's pretty much done now. All right, so, <laughs> all right, a little, little self-film for first bite. What is it uh, Barstool Sports says? It's one bite, everyone knows the rules. Mutton snapper will always be one of my favorite fish, for sure. This was an extremely rare phenomenon, and like I said earlier in the video, it really only happens a couple times a year that you can catch fish like this from land, from the piers, from the inlets, from the jetties but there are tons of amazing fish that you can normally catch from land, especially this time of year. So I need you guys to check out this video to learn where you can go do that. I'll see you all over there.